empathy for everybody right now. Be an adult. Hello, America. This is Charles, and we're going to have us an adult conversation today with Juan. We're going to talk about the realities of COVID. This is not a political video. This is not pulling for one camp over another. This is just about a simple thing that we all have and that we need to extend right now, which is empathy. Bunch of different groups that need it right now. Let's just have an honest conversation. Students, I grew up during the crack epidemic. I grew up during the crack era. These students are growing up during the COVID era. There will be movies, there will be books. Truth be told, we owe these kids all the free mental health services and psychiatrists and whatever that they deserve. They are living in an unprecedented time. Our leaders are not doing what they're supposed to do just around having a plan for these young people with this virus that has been ravaging our country for the last few years at this point. Our most precious asset, the most important group out of all of this are those young people that count on us to protect them, that count on us to have some guidance. Young people, you are being failed in a lot of ways. I'm sorry to say, I will say, there are some adults out there, there's a bunch of adults that are working and doing the best that they can with what they got. However, you caught a raw deal. And some of you have lost parents, some of you have lost friends, some of you have definitely lost grandparents. And on behalf of America, I'm sorry. This sucks. I wanted to just start out with the most important group. I know you're being asked to do some incredible things right now, to be patient. Are we doing virtual? Are we getting herded into a cafeteria? Am I just not doing school? It's a really, really dark time for a lot of you. And I hope that if you are feeling depressed, that you have somebody to talk to, please find somebody to talk to. You are not alone. You are not the only one feeling like the way that you feel. And there are other people out there. Parents. Now we got the kids out the way. I'm gonna pour more wine now. America, parents have a right to be frustrated. Parents are hearing what a lot of other people are hearing. The government gave over $190 billion in COVID relief to schools and districts across the country. And I don't think that it is wrong for parents to expect for those systems, those leaders to have had a plan in place had this virus spiked up again the way in which it has. There are millions of parents that have to go out and be in the world. A lot of those parents, whether they can work at home or not, would like to see a plan in place for their children. And everybody can't just do virtual. Virtual is working for some people and some people is not. I think studies have shown that virtual education is not as effective as in-person education on the whole. Even though some of these people won't die from the virus, there are some people that cannot stay sheltered in place that have to go out and work because they will die financially. Maybe some of you don't understand that, but as somebody who grew up and was homeless and lived in four different shelters, I understand that, that there are consequences when you can't work. And all I'm saying is we got to have empathy for our parents. Educators. We have to have empathy for our educators. Parents out there, understand this. Most teachers are not the admin or union leadership. They don't have say in exactly what happens or what the policies are. And sometimes those policies are handed down by state officials or local district officials, okay? And it's okay for educators to wanna to feel safe. It is okay for educators to say, am I gonna be protected here? What are we doing as a school system for X, Y, and Z? The same way those students and parents are not getting answers, many of those educators are not getting answers either. It's a very tough job, it's difficult. And as my good friend Raymond Ankrum from the Eight Black Hands has told us, it takes a much different skill set to be an effective virtual educator versus being an in-person educator. Educators as a whole, I know it's a tough time. I know that we don't always treat you well. You've chosen to do a job where you are taking people's babies and you wanna keep them safe and you wanna keep yourself safe and you wanna be good at it. America, I'm asking that we give this trusted group of people at least the benefit of the doubt. Does not mean you can't be frustrated. Everybody is frustrated right now. Administration and union leadership. You all deserve some empathy as well. This is brand new. We have not seen this before in modern American history. You got some difficult decisions to make. You're going off of information that you, where you may not have the full 100%. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. You also have to understand and be empathetic to these other groups that are frustrated with you all. I just stated the fact that more than $190 billion was given out 
Now, I understand that that had to go to immediate relief efforts. I understand that we didn't know exactly what was going to happen and how that money might have been spent. But I do know for a fact that all of it wasn't spent on COVID and COVID planning. I know that you're doing the best you can. I know that there's going to be beef between mayors and unions. I know there's going to be issues between districts and, and educators. I get it. But right now, in the middle of a crisis, what is supposed to be one of the top nations that the world has ever seen, we have to stand up and we have to be adults. And you all have chosen a profession where you have to be a leader in this moment of crisis. God doesn't call to qualify. He qualifies the call. I want you to be successful. This country wants you to be successful, despite how it may feel like that may not be the case all the time. Let me give you some insight into why some parents might be really, really frustrated. I like sports. Let's use a sports analogy. Teams practice different plays over and over and over again because in the heat of battle, they don't want to rely solely on frayed thinking. They want to have a plan in place and muscle memory. That means that when uh, the crisis happens, when the play is going down, people know what to do instinctually. What are the protocols that we built in case this thing happened? Maybe some of you have some protocols, but a lot of you don't. And our kids and their parents and our communities are suffering and struggling for it. And as a byproduct, your educators are suffering and struggling for it. Now let's round this out with different camps. To my vaccinated people, I am included. I am somebody who has been vaccinated. I am somebody that has the booster. I know that people are taking hard political lines on this, but I'm not gonna sit up here and lie to you and say that I don't have questions about those things or I'm not frustrated about how things are playing out. I, like everybody else, heard in the beginning that you didn't need a mask or once you got vax, X, X, Y, and Z would happen. And then the booster came and then it was, oh, but you can still get it with all this. I actually do trust the science. I actually do believe that yes, you can still get this thing and transmit this thing to other people. But if you are vaccinated or have the booster shot, it won't be as strong as it would have been if you didn't. Everybody does not have that same trust in that system that they feel that they've been getting different messages from. We can't keep treating people like they're the devil because they don't agree with you. Now, listen, I'm not saying you gotta agree with them. I'm not saying that you gotta go and hug on them and be around them with no mask on. You gotta do what you gotta do and take care of yourself, but we can't keep demonizing everybody else around us because of what Fox News says or MSNBC says. There are people that do stand to gain when we are so, so divided. This is no longer a party thing or a race thing or a class thing, okay? The people that disagree with you might be your friends. It might be your loved ones. It might be the crazy family group text that you have uh, that I know that I'm a part of one where there are a lot of different opinions. And these are not people that I want to throw away. These are people that I love. And while I may not agree with them, I will not treat them like heathens and I won't call them the devil. The anti-vaxxers. I have empathy for you. I'm a skeptical person too. And I've heard the same uh, <laughs> contradictory research. I've seen the video, cause y'all have shared it a billion times where Fauci was saying that you don't need a mask. And then there's a video next to him saying that you do need a mask, but you won't get anywhere. If you're calling vaccinated people, people like me, sheep, you have a right to believe what you want to believe, but you also have to understand if these people believe this thing in this science and they see the numbers of people dying, calling them sheep is not going to get you closer to your goal either. But I do have empathy for you. Like I said, I don't think you are crazy. Some of y'all are crazy, but there's some vaccinated people that are crazy too. It's a lot of crazy people and all of this stuff. I don't think you're crazy for questioning all the different things you're hearing and I won't treat you like that and I suggest that you don't treat these vaccinated people like that. America takes a lot of pride in being the strongest nation, the richest nation, the this, the that, and the third. And in the middle of a crisis, we are not acting like adults. We are not acting civilized. We're not acting like the world champs that we proclaim to be. We ain't even acting up to the standard that some of those people that don't have the highest uh, expectations of us, uh, we're not even standing up to that expectation. This is hard. This is sad. This is frustrating. This is confusing. A lot of people have died and more will and more hospitals will fill up. Now, how do we want to go out? How do we want to like deal with that? I don't know much, but I do know that empathy and trying to understand where other people are coming from has actually been helpful for me during these times, but we're going to need more wine. And we're gonna need more adults. We're gonna need more rational thinkers if we're gonna get through this thing and be stronger on the other side. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Peace. 
the better question is, are you okay with failing? Are you okay with losing? If you can answer those things as yes, then I would say run like hell. Start running right now. Stop waiting for folks. 